Welcome to Writing Mules. Today we'll talk about how to buy a mule. One to enjoy when you're out riding, either outside with friends or at the farm. To buy a mule, you have to consider various factors. One of them is age. If you're buying a mule, or several, to ride for enjoyment, make sure they're around six years of age. Because at this age, they haven't settled, formed, and they are at an age where it's difficult to form any new bad habits. Of course, this also depends on the treatment and handling given by the owner. Here are some other factors to consider when buying a mule. Let's take a look at our mule's phenotype. The mule must look pretty, must have a good size, must have a round shaped haunch, a pretty one, and a beautiful and abundant tail, as well as well-set limbs that are straight and thin. Make sure they're pretty. When you're discussing phenotype, you're talking about beauty, from the tip of the ears to the tip of the tail. When discussing a mule's phenotype, note that the haunches must be large, round and muscly. Remember that the sacrum, located at the back, should not be taller but rather level to the withers. In other words, the haunches should not be taller than the shoulders. Preventive care is essential for the mules and not just for the breeder's sake, but also for the buyer's sake. Knowing the mule's vaccination schedule is also essential. This is important information not only for buying the mule, but in order to maintain the animal's well-being. We administer three shots, the influenza, encephalitis, and tetanus vaccines. I recommend vaccinating the mares before the mule colts are born. That way the mule colts can acquire the necessary antibodies from the colostrum. We shouldn't forget the laxative, which should be administered both orally and by injection. When buying an animal, remember to look closely at its extremities and aplomb. Checking the mouth is also important, not just to verify age, but to see how well the animal handles. Make sure the animal doesn't have any scars or wounds that can affect its performance when being ridden. Now that we've discussed the importance of knowing the age of a mule, let's discover a practical way of finding out this information. Checking its teeth. My grandparents taught me that once a mule got rid of its baby teeth, specifically the two upper middle teeth and the two lower middle teeth, the mule was three years old. When the mule got rid of its other baby teeth and even those out, and my grandparents called these the second set, they would be four years old. And when the mule got rid of, as my grandparents called it, the last ones, which are these two at the border, and when those evened out, that meant the mule was five years old. Now let's see what other ways we can check for the mule's age. Like when the mule is six years old, seven years old, eight years old. Going back to what my grandparents said, all the teeth have a little hole. This according to our ancestors. This cavity mentioned by the elders is called an infundibulum. When this cavity looks worn out or spent, that means the animal is older. That cavity is filled in on those first teeth to be replaced. Once the cavity of the first four teeth is filled in, that means the animal is six years old. So the little holes continue to fill in, and once the holes of the second set of teeth are filled in, 
That means the mule is seven years old. And when the holes of the last set of teeth are filled in, that means the mule is eight years old. From then on, once all the holes of all the teeth are filled in, it's harder to know the age of the mule. The elders had another technique in order to find out the age of the mules. It consists of touching under the chin. When the tip of it started to thin, they would state the age of the mule as being 9 or 10 years old. When you buy a mule, you check the mouth closely, because it is there where you will discover what this animal will become. Not only because of the way the animal will handle, like I mentioned before, but also because of its dentition. A faulty set of teeth will mean that the animal will not chew properly, which will complicate digestion. Improper digestion will lead to colics. Even though mules are much more resistant to the same illnesses that trouble horses, they still can suffer from colic. That's why we have to make sure the mules have proper teeth and take care of those teeth properly. And that means all of their teeth. That way we can ensure the mule chews properly. This is important in order to ensure a proper digestive process. I'd say that when these animals don't have good teeth, not only will they be prone to colic, they will also suffer from a type of stress that will be difficult to manage by its rider. When the animal is uncomfortable with its mouth, either because of its gums or teeth, the rider will encounter problems. It's from here we start to interact. In order for the animal to defend itself with the help of training, and so here we observe how a good set of teeth can affect not only nutrition, but also training. When discussing teeth, you must also discuss nutrition. That's why when buying a mule, make sure to ask what that individual eats. That way, you can avoid making any sudden changes to its diet. If this animal's diet consists of a particular feed, which is not ideal, it should be hay, then we should do the changes gradually. That way, the mule's digestive process won't suffer. Another health factor to consider are the hooves. The hooves are important. I would say that a mule without hooves is not a mule. Why? Because we need hooves that are healthy, viable, complete and firm. They must be able to resist all the work they are destined and evolved to perform. When checking the hooves, not only do we have an idea of their aplomb, but also of their strength, of their grandeur, and whether or not these conform to their size. Teléfono 310-448-1502. Mayores informes, info arroba criaderovillaluz.com. Visítenos en www.criaderovillaluz.com. Riding Mules, the program where you can learn about the history, breeding, and management of mules. Mules helped to form our region and culture. Today they're still present in the countryside when riding and in equine exhibitions a program where the mule is the star and where it can showcase its ability and intelligence. It is also a very skilled work animal and one that has participated in the forging of this land. In writing mules, check out how mules have adapted to the modern world. They have stood out at dressage and runway performances. They also make great mothers. Riding mule seasons will consist of 12 episodes, which will be presented by Ovidio Osorio, mule expert, and will be showcased on TV Agro. These will also be uploaded to TV Agro's YouTube channel. 
Riding Mules. Welcome back to Riding Mules. Today we look at what factors to consider when buying a mule. As you can see, this was another way to tell the age of a mule. It consisted of pinching the skin, and depending on how long it took for the wrinkle to disappear, you could calculate the age. For example, looking at what I'm doing to this mule, The wrinkle disappears immediately. It's a young mule, one that is approximately eight or nine years of age. The exact age is on its certificate. So here we can appreciate how quickly the wrinkle disappears. This is a young mule. A mule's cost depends on its qualities. Some mules are used for working, other mules are used for riding, and others for showcases. Each mule is different. Their purpose is decided when they're approximately three years of age. When we buy a mule, referring now to the subject of tameness, we must observe it being geared up. We must carefully watch and see that the mule doesn't misbehave when placing the headgear or saddle. When we're talking about a tame, saddled mule, we're talking about will. What is the will of the individuals here? Let's say I'm out riding with 15, 20 or more people, and suddenly I decide to leave the group. Let's see what my mule's will is going to be. She should be able to leave the group immediately, to leave all of her friends behind. When I decide to go, she should be able to obey me right away. When deciding whether to buy a male or a female mule, there's really no difference. Both are tame. Both are a soft ride and easy to handle. It's always important to know the genealogy, or to at least know the animal's parents. Of course, this information is not available in all cases. Our mules have a variety of colors. Here we can appreciate the colors we have here in our breeding farm. Remember, the colors do not influence the quality of an individual. Our grandparents used to say that a dark-colored mule was a lazy mule. Another said that a dark mule didn't like to be ridden. Our experience has been the opposite. Another elder said that the best mules to ride are the dark-colored mules. The best work mules are the dark-colored mules. These same statements have been made about every color mule. Some would say the white mule is the most tame. Others would say the white mule is the one that kicked the most. Some say the black mule is the laziest, while others will say the black mule is the most beautiful. At my age, and with all my experience of working with mules of all colors and sizes and ages, I have a lot to share. A riding mule can be any color. A working mule can be of any color. A cowboy mule can be of any color as well. Speaking of colors, this mule is white. She wasn't born white. She was born black with white hairs. Few white hairs. In order to see those white hairs, you had to get in really closely. As she grew, so did the number of white hairs. When she turned three years of age, she was roughly 50% white and 50% black. The older she got, the more white hairs she obtained and fewer black hairs remained. From the age of nine onward, animals that have that ratio of white to black hair 
they will eventually turn white. For example, this mule is 12 years old, and already her hair is white. White mules aren't very common. Some of them aren't even completely white. This color is also known as a spotted white color, due to its black and white color and spotted appearance. Let's continue discussing the colors of the mules you will find on our farm. This is a black mule. She was born black with no white hairs. She grew up black with no white hairs. And she grew old, never showing any white hairs. Majoral of Bijalus, chestnut colored. This color has many tones. Sometimes it's fiery, other times it's lighter. Sometimes it's pale and other times darker. Jumbo de Villaluz, dark colored. Why do we call it Saino? Because of the amount of black hairs it has and also because of the golden hairs it has on its face. He also has golden hairs on the sides. So that combination of colors, of black hairs with gold hairs, is called Saino. Here's La Chacha of Villaluz. She's what we call bajo colored. They can be dark or light toned. But as long as they have those prominent lines across their shoulders, we can call them bajos. As long as they have a line of dark hair that goes from their forehead down the back to the tip of the tail, we can call them bajos. Paquita of Villaluz is a bajo colored mule. She has a pale tone, some call it a Moorish tone. But as long as they have that cross, that cross on the shoulders, or that dark line of hair from the forehead to the tip of the tail, we can call them bajo colored. Nuvarron of Villaluz. He's a young mule, 30 months of age. He's about to begin training. His hair color has many names. Some call it gray, some say mouse-colored, others might say lead-colored, others may call it painted, because it can have three colors of hairs, black, some blonde, and some white. The common name for this color is brown, also brunette. If we analyze this color further, we can also call it bajo because it has the cross on the shoulders, even though it's more pale. We can also see the line along its back, which goes all the way to the tip of the tail. Humberto Valencia is a sugar farmer. His love for these animals inspired him to buy Espuma, a wonderful white mule with great attributes that has been his companion for eight years. I really like this mule because she is very tame. Yes, she's also very smart because when I call her by her name, she understands even if she's in a group with others. She is very tame. She's great to work with and she's also very fast. That's great for cattle ranching. She really shines due to her speed and for her tameness. What first drew me to her was her shine. Espuma for me is like a pet. Basically what I do, I spoil her, I take care of her. She's my company. She's always with me. You get attached to an animal like that. Show 1502. Mayores informes, info arroba criaderovillaluz.com. Visítenos en www.criaderovillaluz.com. Now let's talk about how you should transport these animals by truck. Any horse or mule breeder should have a loading dock inside their farm in order to load the animals. Here is this farm's loading station. Make sure all the wooden chips inside the truck are clean. 
Francisco debe estar siempre limpio. Here we can see how the first mule is loaded. There should be no space between the truck and the ramp. This is done in order to avoid accidents. First one in was Natalia de Villaluz, the second, Mayoral of Villaluz. The third mule was Caporal of Villaluz. When traveling long distances, the mules should be separated. This separation allows the mules more comfort. Whenever there's a sudden movement, the mules can lean on the divider, as opposed to leaning on each other. Using the halter to tie up the mules has many advantages. It ensures that each mule stays in place. This way, the mules avoid stepping on and biting one another. With this mule, we have finished loading our truck. Once the animal enters, we close the door. I would like to remind anybody who's loading these animals for whatever reason to be very careful. Please remind the driver to be very gentle during the trip. That way, once they arrive to their destination in order to be ridden, they do so unharmed. Now let's take a look at a truck that doesn't need a loading station to load or unload the animals because it already comes with a ramp attached to the back of the truck. Let's start loading the mules using this ramp. Here you can see how the mules already know how to use this system. You can tell these are busy animals who've used this truck more than once and have used the ramp to get inside. Five out of seven have already boarded. This vehicle always travels with seven mules. All seven get inside with the same ease you saw from the first one. The ramp comes with a safety lock. Once the ramp is leaning against the truck, you must do the following. Here you can see how the hook holds onto the door. We hook it in here and then place the pin. Once the pin is placed, the ramp won't fall. The ramp no longer poses a danger. These ramps are very practical because they eliminate the need of loading stations. Check out how you only need one ramp to unload the mules as opposed to two ramps when you were loading them. Now let's remember the main things to take into account when buying a mule. Minimum age of the mule six years. Analyze the phenotype and bone structure of the mule. Make sure the hooves, legs, and mouth are healthy. Observe the mule being saddled and ride her to make sure she doesn't have any bad habits. Ask for her background, health, and diet. Remember to transport her with care. We hope you enjoyed our program and learned how to buy a mule, one which you will take pleasure in riding. See you next time on Riding Mules.